Good morning, mathematicians. We're looking at Wednesday of week nine, and we're going to start off with some tape diagrams. This says John Lemon has a three liter pitcher of lemonade. He drinks half of the total lemonade. Show how much he drank in two ways using the tape diagrams below. So the entire amount of lemonade that he had to drink was three liters. So I'm going to label this top one as three because this represents the entire quantity of lemonade. And how much of that did he drink? Well, he drank half of it. So here is one tape diagram that shows half of three. Now down below, we have taken that three and we have broken it, we've partitioned it, and we've created two different tape diagrams from that. Now three broken in half would be one and a half liters here, and one and a half liters here. And how much of the three between both of them uh, liters of lemonade did he drink? Well, he still drank half of it. So we still would just shade half, but now it's clearly broken in two. So we have shown the problem in two different ways with two different diagrams. Since we do have the lines below, I can infer that they're using me to explain. I'm going to write it here because you know me, I tend to write a little bit big, and this way you can write along with me. In the first diagram, remember guys, these are tape diagrams. In the first diagram, we split one whole into, and actually, I'm going to say three holes. I was thinking of the one as like the one diagram, right? But really here, we're splitting the three holes shown in one tape diagram. So just to make sure that we're really clear, I'm going to go ahead and change that. We split three holes into half. So we split them into halves, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Now, in the second, the three holes are divided into separate halves. Okay, and this has really just said in words exactly what we did as we answered this problem. Okay, let's go ahead to our next one where we're going to sketch a rectangular prism. It has to have a volume of 28 cubic centimeters, but you can do it your way. I love these problems because not only does it give us the chance to practice our volume standards, but we also practice just our drawing skills of drawing these prisms. All right, I drew the front face of my prism and I'm gonna give it the dimensions of two centimeters and two centimeters long. Now, I have to use a fact that's going to get me to 28, right? So it has to be 28 equals, right now I have two times two. Now, two times two is going to give me four. Four times what gets me to 28? Well, that tells me everything I need to know to finish this. I have to get a width of seven. Okay, so I've done that right there. I'm going to clean up my prism a little bit. Man, it kind of looks like a stick of butter, doesn't it? Now, you could have done yours differently. You don't have to do it this way. But what we have to have in common is that all three factors multiplied together have to get us to 28. And then when you label your prism, it should look reasonable. How we've labeled that, how we've represented those different lengths. All right, let's go to the last one. And I hope you have your thinking cap on because we are going to use several tools in our math toolbox to answer this question. But let's just go one at a time and certainly we'll see exactly how to get to this answer and definitely grow, grow our brains as mathematicians. We are thinking about two rectangular prisms. They have a combined volume of 432 cubic feet. Now, there's two of them. So prism A 
has half the volume of prism B. So that's the first thing that I know is that in all, their volume is 432, but prism A is half of what prism B is. So when I hear that, I picture almost, let me put it over here, I picture almost like a tape diagram. If this entire length is 432, it's like I could break this into thirds because then look, then this is going to be double what this is. So this is like the volume of prism B versus the volume of prism A because now A is going to be half of the volume of B. So what I'm actually going to do to figure out the length is I'm going to divide it into three because I'm going to get two of those parts to prism B and one of those parts to prism A. All right. So how many times can three go into 432? Let's start with giving it a group of 100. That's going to use up 300 of this, and I have a difference of 132. All right. Now, how many times can three go into this? Uh, let's start with 40, because three times four is 12, and then there's one zero outside the basic fact. So now I'm going to subtract, and I get a difference of 12. How many times can three go into 12? Exactly four times. Four times three is 12, and there's no remainder. So I know that 144 is the number I'm looking for. Now, remember, prism A gets one group of that. So A said, or one said, what is the volume of prism A? Well, the volume of prism A it's that. It's 144 feet cubed. The volume of prism B is double this, right? It's 144 and 144. What's 144 plus 144? Double each of those digits, and we have 288. And yes, they're still feet cubed. All right, give yourself a pat on the back. We are a third there in this challenging problem. Let's go to number two. Number two is asking us to look closer at this, prism A. All right, we're going to ignore prism B for the time being. We're just focused on prism A, this 144 cubed prism. If prism A has a base area that is 20 feet square, what is the height? All right, remember, volume can equal area of the base times height. So if we know that the area of the base is 24, what's the height got to be for it to equal 144? Because we already know the volume. So what I have to do to figure this out, boys and girls, is I have to divide out the 24, right? If I take 124, or if I take 144 and divide it by 24, then I'll find out what the height has to be. Okay, so I am going to, maybe I'll come to the side here so that I can save some room for number three because we are going to need it. Let's take our 144 and let's divide it by 24. Okay, I'm going to come over here so that we can take a look at this together. Now, 24 is very close to 25, isn't it? Think about it almost like quarters. If I had 25 and I was trying to get to 144 cents, how many quarters could I use? Well, four quarters, I'm going to do them like tallies, would get me 100 cents, wouldn't it? Five quarters would get me to 125. One more quarter would get me to 150. Is that going to be too big? I don't know. Let's try it since we were just a little bit smaller. So notice I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I am estimating that this is going to be 24 times six. I'm going to have to do a little guess and check here. Let's see how close we are to 144. Because when I divide, I want to get as close as I can to using all of it without going over, right? So maybe it's six, maybe it's five. Let's find out. Four times six is 24. Here's my four, carry my two. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14. I have 144. Take a look. We got exactly the number we needed. 
So we know that 24 goes into 144 exactly six times. So what does that tell us? No remainder. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the volume I'm after, 144, is exactly the result of 24 times six. So I know the height of prism A now. I know the height of prism A is exactly six feet. With division, sometimes you have to do guess and check. Maybe you did 24 times 5 at first, and then you found that if this was 24, ooh, that tells you you can get one more group of 24 to give you six groups of 24, okay? Now, that finishes out this number two. Let's take a look at number three. Notice what it says, challenging. And sure enough, it is. But mathematicians, we are going to persevere and think about this, and for sure, we'll be stronger for thinking through this problem. Number three says, if prism B's base, so prism B was this one, right? If prism B's base is two-thirds the area of prism A's base, what's the height of prism B? Okay, let's break this down. The first thing we need to know is what is two-thirds of what the area of prism A's base was. What was the area of prism A's base? The area of prism A's base was 24. So we want to know what 24 times 2 thirds equals. That's what I want to know, all right? That is like taking 24 and breaking it into three parts and then having two of those parts, okay? That's like taking 24, dividing it into three parts, and then whatever that number is, 24 divided by 3, having two of those. So multiplying that by 2. Well, 24 divided by 3 equals 8. And what if I have 2 times 8? What do I have then? I have 16. So I know that 16 is 2 thirds of 24. That is interesting. We took 24. If we break it in three parts, that's 8. I have 2 of those, so I have. 16. That's not yet the answer. This is actually just, sorry, this is actually just what the base is. Okay, so that's what it told me. That is the base of prism B. So we are going to use volume equals area of the base times height. I already know that my volume is 288, and I know now that the area of the base is 16 but I have to find out what the height is. So what am I going to do to figure out what the height is for prism B? I'm going to use the same strategy as I did above. I'm going to take 288 and divide it by 16. Okay. Man, we need a lot of space on this problem. So we're going to write our 288 being divided by 16. And let's go. How many times can 16 go into this? Well, let's start with 10 times, right? If I have this times, or 16 times 10, I have 160. All right, let's subtract here. 8 minus 0 is 8. 8 minus 6 is 2. And 2 minus 1 is 1. All right, now that was a good choice. I can't get another group of 10 from that, can I? Because I don't have 160. But I know I have just a little bit less than 160. How many less groups of 16 might that be? Well, if 160 is 10 groups, nine groups maybe seem a little bit too big. Eight groups might be right. Seven groups might be right. I'm not sure. So what I do is I come to the side and I try 16 times something to see how close I can get to 128 without going over. Let's go with. Let's go with a, let's go with an 8, okay? Now, 8 times 6 is 48. Here's my 8, here's my 4. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12. I have found it. I can get exactly 8 groups. I'm going to erase this carried forward just because I don't want us to get confused here. I have done it. I have no remainder. So my answer here is 18. What does that tell me? Which of the variables were we finding? We were finding the height. 
So I know the height equals 18. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to record that. It was 18 and it was 18 what? It was 18 feet. Give yourself a pat on the back for persevering through what was a challenging problem, but absolutely, positively, we can do it. That finishes out our Wednesday call.